Hi Libra, welcome to your reading for December 2024. Um, I'm, di I'm slightly distracted because your pre-reading meditation was weird and funny, but oh well. Um, please go to the description box if you want to see um, the readings, the um, written daily readings, or if you want to book a personal reading. I'm, I might as well just get straight into this meditation because it's going to keep playing my mind. So basically I started to get the um, theme tune for Batman, but like the old, like the Adam West version of Batman. Um, and it was Batman and Robin actually, wasn't it? So I got the theme tune for that. And then um, I could see them doing the weird escapades and then you know when like they have the um on the screen they have did they have like the words of the sound effects like it was from a comic book like if they did pow or whatever that would come up it did I was laughing when I saw that to be honest with you and I was thinking of Adam West in general rest in peace Adam West and thinking even of his character on Family Guy as well of all the weird crazy escapades that he, he got up to on that too as a character and it just made me think it's just that really silly fun energy and an adventurous energy um so it made me think that I don't know if that's a phase that you're well to be frank if I'm right about this um I should check the the info I've got actually but I believe um you with the Pluto shifting with Pluto shifting out of Capricorn and into Aquarius it was in your fourth house when it was in Capricorn but now it's in your fifth house now that Pluto's in Aquarius it's in your fifth house and there are I did videos on that by the way so if you want to see the video for Pluto entering Aquarius it will be on the channel in the videos because I go through the astrology and um I pull cards as well that's like it, it'll be about a 10 minute or so video but um that makes sense with that shift happening, but it's just it was just really silly and fun and that has its value, doesn't it, being silly and fun? So that's what I saw. What else did I want to say to you before that interruption? Um, I think that was about it, actually, but I think we're going to get into your reading. So we've got the Oracle decks I'm going to be using for the reading today. We've got the Oracle of the Unicorns, which feels like quite a light-hearted deck and it goes nicely with um, Sedge season, Sagittarius season that we're in now because unicorns are basically horses with horns to a certain degree, aren't they? So let's get into it. That just cracked me up. Um, I do remember watching that when, when I was a kid. I mean, it's even beyond my years, to be honest, but somehow I ended up watching it. I used to watch some weird, weird stuff when I was a kid. I've always been into like period dramas and stuff like that anyway. So I like the old school. I like black and white films. Well, I, when I was a kid, I was watching black and white films with my mum on Saturdays. Anyway, what do we need to know for you, Libras? Not that many. Okay, we're going to have to take it because they're all upright. But um, yeah, I guess that's it. So we have receive, we have balance, and we have discernment. Okay, so receive says be open to receiving goodness believe you are worthy of abundance a gift is coming to you soon oh lord this today i've recorded you're my third um reading re um, video reading and so was it yesterday or, or was it the day before it's like, so it's either the 26th 27th or 28th um of november these messages happened so i think the 26th 27th i did a message that spoke of worthiness um the birthright of worthiness that you're always worthy so if you want to see that go to the link in the description box for the daily written readings and today I spoke about the gift but it was more the gift in the little things but that worthiness that was really important I have a feeling it was the 27th of November if not the 26th we also have balance take time to relax indulge a little more or less set boundaries with your work so that would be like that fun silly energy and then we have discernment. All is not what it seems. Stay true to your knowing. Keep your dreams a secret. So how are we going to do this? I think we'll do it like that. It's interesting that that balance card is in between re receiving and discernment because then that makes me think that whatever's being offered to you, um, the balance here might be about, about the discernment of if what you're being offered is is good enough for you well good enough is one thing or what you actually want um so that's what that makes me think let's get the tarot cards out so what does libra sun moon and rising need to know that was quick right another card of balance and it's your card um as well so and interestingly to me balance and discernment would both be connected to Libra energy balances in like justice and just balance in general and discernment would be a queen of swords energy so I wouldn't be surprised if she shows up she's not on the bottom of the deck but yeah and this speaks of worthiness again with that justice card 
So let's get the rest of the cards out for you. We've got, so well, what did we say about the discernment here? I mean, this is a past energy actually, the Seven of Swords, but that discernment, Nine of Cups, I said, um, if, if what you're being offered is um, good enough or what you really want with the Nine of Cups, that's a challenge energy. We've got the star, that's a gift, the star's a gift. Ten of Pentacles, lottery win, <laughs> maybe, you never know, it might be a lottery win with the Ten of Pentacles and the star together and the Nine of Cups next to it as well. Um, this is a card that shows what you need to be more aware of in general within yourself. We've got the devil there, potential future energy and the empress, which is another Libra card or can be connected to Libra. The devil as a future energy, um, it can be a projection into the future like fears, but again with this discernment energy and it's showing up there like that kind of deceptive energy with the devil and the seven of swords showing up there and there. Um, it's kind of being careful and having the discernment to, to know if what you're receiving is what you really want, whether that is that somebody's offering you something or even if you're telling yourself, I should want this, even if you really don't. It's do, you know, when you do what you think you should do rather than what you actually want to do, it's that kind of energy. So let's look at justice. Let's look at the justice card first of all. And be careful as well if what you're being offered, if there isn't some... Oh, I don't even know how to put this. Um, something attached to it that isn't, oh, I don't know. It's kind of like a bit of a trickster energy, isn't it? Like, you know, if you don't read the small print, it's that kind of vibe, but it can play play out in any kind of way. Um, like love bombing or something. I don't know. There's just different ways that can play out. So anyway, we've got the Hierophant. Yeah, be careful if you're signing contracts, actually, with Justice and the Hierophant there. Be very, very careful if you're signing contracts, I would say. And definitely check the fine print. Nine of Cups. There's a, ish, there's a thing about commitment here as well, with Justice, the Hierophant, and the Ten of Pentacles being there. <coughs> Excuse me, just sort of, you, you might need to consider if whatever you're deciding to commit to, whether it is a relationship, a con contract, a job, something within your community, anything at all, a hobby even, um, check in with yourself if it really is what you want and something you get enjoy out of. We've got the moon, that's another energy that can, that's hidden, things that are hidden. You know, like that too good to be true, just be careful if something's too good to be true. Try that again. So we also have the Seven of Cups that can be a bit confusing sometimes where everything's not clear in the chariot before you move forward. Yeah, so just check in. Whatever you're getting yourself involved with or any decisions that you're making, use that discernment to make sure it is actually what you really want because appearances can be deceptive. So check it out fully or check in with yourself in terms of how you feel fully before moving forward, I would say. Even as simple as like if you're signing up to do a course, you might want to just sort of think, do what is this what I really, really want to do? I remember one time, I don't know why this story is coming up now, when I was think, contemplating different careers and I, I thought, oh, you know what, I could do coding because it kind of fits my personality, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I did start some coding courses, but I'll be honest, I think it's a fantastic ability to have, but I found it so boring. <laughs> so I got to give respect to people that do coding because yeah, I can't, <laughs> I couldn't do it, but it is really technical and it's really valuable. Um, but one thing I realized is I made a list of reasons why I should do coding and how it much match my personality. And then when I looked at the list again, when I started doing the channel, the tarot channel, I was like, actually this all, reasons why I like tarot and how tarot doing tarot um, readings matches my personality so that was really interesting but yeah check in with yourself so anyway we're doing the seven of swords so this is past energies here we've got the fool and the sun I'll see what else comes after this but I do have a thought on this it is trickster energy, I'm not going to lie. It is a bit of a trickster energy and it's past, so you don't have to worry about it as a future position. 
Um, am I going to take all of those? Yeah, I will take all of them. Right, five of ones. The five of ones, I believe it should be, should it be upright? No, it shouldn't. I, I think it's because I'd put it in the deck after the last reading. I did um, sort and shuffle the decks, but obviously I missed that card, which does happen sometimes um, when you're doing loads of readings. It is an energy of in the past where you've either lied to yourself or been tricked and you've kind of, you may have jumped headfirst into something um, that seemed like it would turn out positively or it was something that you really wanted, but it turned out in the end that it wasn't. However, I think you recognise that. Eventually you did recognise it and you, you realise, actually, no, this isn't what I want. I'm just kind of restricting myself, limiting myself, staying in a comfort zone even, and you left that behind and realised that you realised more of what you actually did want or how you felt about that situation. Um, so you might, that's that's discernment. I mean, it's a, it's, it's Yes, you may have gotten tricked or lied to yourself, but eventually you did use your own sense of discernment and it's, it's tapping back into that. That's why it's come up as a past energy to remind you of tapping into that again. We've got the Nine of Cups as the challenge here. And this trick, being tricked, it could have been anything from being tricked into getting into a relationship with somebody where they made it seem like it was great or they were great or whatever. And then you realise it wasn't a job, even something for yourself that you'd said, oh, I want to pursue this like I did with the coding. And it was like, actually, no, I don't really want to do this. Right. You've got the King of Swords discernment again. Whatever you're getting involved with in the, ch the challenge, I think the whole challenge here is the discernment to make sure that you're tapping into that King of Swords energy within yourself to discern if it's what you really want. Four of Pentacles, do you really want it or are you just holding on to it or playing safe with something? Are you opening up yourself up fully to your fullest potential, to your highest potential with that Four of Pentacles as well? We've got the Tower. When with the Four of Pentacles next to the Tower, that can be a fear of letting go. So we've got the Hermit and the Two of Swords. Let's get one for the Tower. It feels like a fear of letting go. <coughs> Excuse me, a fear of surrendering. There's almost a bit of procrastination there as well with the Four of Swords and the Hanged Man. Um, it's like there's there's more for you out there. So again, using that discernment to, to decide if something is what you really want. It's like there's a greater journey out there for you, but it's a bit of a, the two truths are there, aren't they? Where on the one hand, you may be holding on to something or choosing something in, um, to stay safe, thinking, oh yeah, this is a good idea. This is right for me. And on the other side of it is actually there's more out there for me. I could be doing more. I could be exploring my my potential more um than by doing this particular thing so it's checking in again making sure it's really really what you want and it's really good for you as well and this theme keeps on coming up doesn't it libra i know it keeps on coming up um, I mean, this one is more about using your discernment in the situation, especially if things have been offered to you, but it keeps on coming up. I've noticed it's about three readings I've done for you now, this concept of make sure you, um, you're choosing what you really want. So I guess it's an oncoming, ongoing theme or I don't know. Right, we've got the star. This is the external energy, any energy that's external to you. So we've got the two of pentacles. There may be something here that is being offered to you, um, whether it is physical or on a spiritual level, level even, and you're not sure, or you focus on other things and you can't even see it. You've got the, the star to me is a gift, might be your gifts, to be honest. You might have gifts that you're not using, to be frank. You've got the six of pentacles, the ace of pentacles, which is a great opportunity. It's that, so it could be that you have a gift that you could use and that's an opportunity in itself and you get something back in return. But I almost feel like the ten of swords is shutting it down. 
or you have shut it down in the past maybe this is something from the past um and a gift that you have that you've used in the past and you've kind of shut it down let's get one more All right, we've got the King of Pentacles here now. So even if you have shot something down from the past, you can bring it back to life with that King of Pentacles and the Death card. If you're willing to, to put the effort into it and to give it a chance, you can bring it back to life, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously, you're going to have to apply it to if it resonates to whatever it's relevant to in your life. But yeah, it's an external energy. It's a gift, whether it's a gift that you've been, that's a spiritual gift to you or a gift that you have to share, which the spiritual gift is a gift you, you can share as well. Um, okay. Could be something being offered by someone else in general as well, as I said, because there's physical aspects there, but it kind of feels like you're just shutting it down and not acknowledging it. It might be as simple as just needing to give it more attention. But you, as I say, you seem to be focused elsewhere, to be honest with you. Right, Ten of Pentacles. So this is anything that you need to be more aware of. This is whatever is needed for your long-term stability, even your, your legacy. Even. So this star, because they're connected, like that's above that. That star could be your legacy, whatever that star is. That could be your legacy, but again... I don't know if you're giving any full attention to it. Five of Cups. So, yeah, there's a bit of a blockage there. Or blocking it out, shutting it out. Again, it's almost like your focus is elsewhere with that Five of Cups. Ace of Wands. Ace of Cups. This is a beautiful energy because this is something very inspiring, very fulfilling, but it almost feels like you're shutting it down. And then we've got judgment, but it, you could you could choose this. This is your decision to make. And as I say, there's a possibility that this is something that has come up for you before or it's a gift that you already have. And it's just a case of you making this the decision if you want this to be your legacy. Um, this Five of Cups, it's like... I feel, okay, I feel like, I don't know if it was you I used this example with before. Um, but it's also almost like, say if it was a career path, say if you were very focused on one particular career path but it just wasn't working out for you and you're very, very disappointed, but you have another gift that you could use. And it's almost like the universe is encouraging you to use that specific gift, but your focus is on this other career. And because you're so disappointed about that thing not working out, it's like you're shutting down the gift that would be most valuable for you and for you to use. And that could be your legacy, to be honest. So where it even says, um, balance take time to relax indulge a little more or less set boundaries with your work the balance issue might be that your attention is elsewhere so the thing that would um remove that kind of disappointment or take you away from that sense of disappointment would be if you gave the attention to the gift whatever the gift is and and put your energy and efforts into that and then it would make you happier And part of using your discernment is understanding that actually this is, you know, like if, if you speak in spot soul contracts, even it's like there's something that you're meant to do and it will bring you the greatest um, sense of fulfillment and success in life. But you're kind of neglecting that and focusing on other things. And it's time to use your discernment to realize that possibly. OK, so. Fascinating reading, Libra. And this whole thing about worthiness as well, when I talk about worthiness, it could almost be that maybe the gift um, that you have, say if it was a spiritual gift that you have, you're kind of like, 
maybe you don't think that you're good enough with it or something and that's why you're kind of shutting it down a little bit but it's almost as if you open yourself up more to that gift um you'd have you'd receive greater goodness and abundance let's look at the devil because this is the potential future energy see the devil can be not letting go as well can't it let's see so we have the three of cups the deck's upside down that's why i thought i'd just switch turned it up then right three of cups the six of swords there's something here about working um I don't know how to put it, work, like working with different people that might, that doesn't have to be in a literal work setting, but say, even if it was something community based or something, um, if you're kind of willing to let go of this kind of idea that you have in your head of what you should be doing or how you should be doing things and open yourself up to new people or different people, it almost kind of helps you to move more towards that abundance. The devil's there again, page of wands. There might be some fear here as well about moving towards this. Seven of swords, because it feels risky. It feels risky. Like something as simple as, say if it was in work, it's clients, different type, a different type of clients even. I, I don't really know. I can't 100% explain how that would work, but... There's something about being around different people or a different type of people that will help the situation somehow. Let's get one for the devil and see what comes up. It could even be that you, I was going to say that you help people um, face their inner demons, to be frank, and you help them to heal with that four of swords. Yeah, you help them discover their truth and the truth behind what the, the inner demons are or their fears are, and you help put them on a new path. Let's get one for the Seven of Swords. So I would say it's about releasing the fear, um, any fears you have and any attachment to, to something that's keeping you restricted because there's something better for you to move towards. Seven of Swords, Two of Cups. I think you could help, this could be very much for someone with a spiritual gift where you can help people to really understand themselves and to um, see where they've kind of been lying to themselves or deceive themselves, um, to see the truth, to be honest with you, and to nurture themselves more. So basically to heal. So like you could be, you could have the ability to be like a life coach or something like that, but if your focus is elsewhere and it's like, oh no, I've gone focused on that, but You'd, you'd be really great as like a life coach or a counsellor. A writer's here as well with the Knight of Cups. You could work as a couples therapist. <laughs> I think I would absolutely love that to be some sort of, well, I say that now, I've never done it, but um, to work with couples and help them kind of understand what the issues are in their relationship, that'd be fun. Well, valuable if not fun. But yeah, with the future energy, so future energy, as I said, it looks like there's f fear at the very least or holding on, but you need to let that go. And this is a heads up because obviously with the future, it's a potential, it's not telling you what has to happen. You get a choice with you seeing this, it's a heads up to you that, okay, if I'm, what am I holding on to that needs to be released? What do I need to let go of? What are the fears I need to let go of so that I can move forward and, and get away from that devil energy? Okay, let's look at the guidance for you. You've got the Empress's guidance, that's great. And that is about, for me, that's almost saying that you need to, you, whatever the gift is, you need to share it. Um, I know it's saying that a gift is coming to you soon, but the gift sometimes is that you have a gift that you share and then you get gifts in return for that. And the Empress is generous, isn't she? She's known to be generous. Let's put these cards back in the deck. 
what do we need to know about this empress so obviously be authentic and give generously whatever it is that you have to share that is abundance abundant will make you can make you more abundant truth is one thing with that knight of swords and queen of God, you really this really could be someone who's becoming some sort of counselor spiritual healer spiritual guide um i feel like a writer is possible with this i know the queen of cups isn't typically to do with writing but just that creative emotional energy and then the knight of swords could be connected to communication as in writing um you could be an inspirational speaker a coach Ten of Wands, King of Cups is back, Page of Swords is back, and the Eight of Pentacles. Again, that discernment about what you're focusing your time, energy, and attention on. Um, something here is holding you back. There's something holding you back that doesn't need to. I mean, it can be about, there is the element of you being generous and it helps other people. Um release their burdens as well and discover more about themselves but i think there's something with you here that's holding you back too let's see ten of wands anything four of cups see this is where a gift like sometimes the four of cups it can be a gift being offered and complacency is there or refusing to see it um the world that's like going to towards a new chapter and stories as well with the world it can be like writing a new story page of pentacles it's a new a new opportunity something you might be new to actually maybe it's something you haven't even fully explored or developed but let me get one more right curiosity there's something there that that you if you're willing to let go of the burdens or the excess of what you're currently doing you could go towards something um there's something else that you could go towards that would be really abundant for you but you get to share it too. It's a gift that comes to you, but you share your gift in that process too. I'd love to hear your comments on this if you if you if this resonates for you. Fascinating energy. It's funny. I've done. You're my eleventh reading, and I'll be honest. The like, who did I just do? I did. Um, Gemini. Gemini's was a really beautiful, positive reading. Um, I mean, obviously, the, re the point of the readings is not just to be positive. It's for me to give you the truth of whatever the messages I get. But most of the other readings, like nine of them, I think, felt quite heavy and uncomfortable, to be honest. And then the Gemini one was a beautiful, light-hearted energy. This one feels like kind of a beautiful, light-hearted energy as well. So it's like I went through all that with the other nine <laughs> that I did with the heavy energy to the point where I had to have a day's rest in between because I drained myself <laughs> doing the readings, which I don't mind. It's part of the, this is part of what it is doing the readings. Um, but it's like now I've got to the end, everything's all light-hearted. So yeah, interesting. Anyway, let's get your final message. No. Yes. Oh, wow. OK, yeah, it was this one. It is this one. It says, dearest you, do you know how much we love you and want to help you? We are here for you and we hear you ask for guidance, but you must let go and let us help you. You don't have to do it all. You've done your part. Now let us do ours. You would be awestruck if you knew how many strings were pulled through the matrix to give you what you need and desire. Spirit has a plan and when you sign up to be a co-creator you need to remember to allow the partnership. It's not one-sided, your desires and plans meet up with those of spirit. Remember though, spirit's timetable and idea as ideas of how things will play out may be quite different from yours. Trust us, spirit's ideas are amazing. Now let go and let us do the magic. Pay attention to other areas of your life and before you know it a miracle will have taken place. We love you so much. What do you need to let go of or how do you need to shift your attention? This is all that's come into mind with this. Um, this is fascinating. As I say, it's obviously it'll play out differently for each of you, but feel free to leave your comments. I'd love to know how it relates, um, how you relate to this and how it relates to you. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, again, go to the description box if you want to see the daily written readings or if you want to book a personal reading. And do I have anything else to say to you? I think that's it. I'll be back in December. I think it's going to be shorts in December because it's quite feeling quite exhausted for the end of the year. And yeah, until I see you again, take care.